Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are camping in Georgia at FDR State Park. Alright, so we already had a little breakfast. Now it's time to go walk some trails, find something exciting. When in nature, red means danger. Yeah, you mean means danger. Don't eat that shit. Nobody eats it raw. You have to cook it. Don't even put it there. You don't even touch it. It's poison. Oh my gosh, it's not poison. Oh my God. Boy Scouts 101. This is why it's called the pool trail because you end up over here at the street you cross the street and there's the pool which is closed makes sense it's winter time i'm not sure if it's been open or closed since COVID or what i mean there ain't a drop of water in the thing but pool trail Whew. all right Let's go explore some more trails. I see boats for rent. It looks like boats you can rent over there. There's some type of little... I guess that trail walks up this way and you can go there. I've seen this at a few places in this campsite. The gray water dump right in front of where you camp. I mean, it's not, it's just soap, dish water, shower water, but still, I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not the nicest smell and stuff. It's just really weird to me that there's places in the park where you can just dump your gray water on somebody's campsite. I've never seen this before. This is weird. See, so there's another one here. And then there's another one right there next to that trailer. Even though they allow it, I mess, I couldn't do it. I couldn't dump my gray water on somebody's campsite. That's, that's weird, man. I mean, they have a, a dump site. See? Gray water. What if somebody pulls the wrong valve and dumps the black tank? Well, it was a nice, nice trail. There's a whole lot more to it. The wifey ain't up to it. What do you think of the trail? Yeah, the dog's pulling you. You got you got dog assistance up the hill. Failed miserably. Look at that. We could have had a campsite on the water. And well, hey, they got a little general store here called the Trading Post. 
Let's see if it's open. It's closed, but look, they got chips. They got Jiffy Pop. Jams, jellies, whatever. Oh, they got... Oh, marshmallows and some roasting sticks, some walking sticks, some sodas, Gatorade, bait. Not a lot, but probably enough to get you by in a pinch. Oh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday closed. Wow. Oh, they also have ice. Ah, uh, look at that. In honor of Veterans Day, wife made me some pancakes, my favorite. And we're going to be having it with the uh, controversial syrup here. Amazing what's going on these times. All right, to my fellow vets out there, happy Veterans Day. We're still out here camping. Enjoy some good breakfast. Hope you have a fun, safe holiday as well. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, last day here. We just got done eating breakfast, and we actually got everything packed up. We're ready to get out of here. So, give you a quick little review of the FDR uh, State Park here in Georgia. What I didn't like so much is that, like our site here is supposed to be a premium site. We didn't have any on-site septic, so we have to go over here to the dump station on the way out, empty the tanks. I did notice the sites down by the water, which do have a nicer view, actually have septic on site. So that would have been nice. It's just you know a camper thing, and it's pretty convenient just to have that on site. That way, when you leave out of here, you don't have that additional step. And you don't have to wait for, you know, if there might be traffic at a dump station. So it's always nice to have it on site. Um, showed you earlier, there's uh, some rumble strips out there in the road. They put on there to keep people from falling asleep and driving off the road. We hear it constantly, either out here or in the RV, and that road's already kind of loud. Like, whatever it's paved of, tires make a lot of noise, but if somebody has mud tires, like, wow, like, you'll hear them coming for three, four minutes. <laughs> it's really loud with that. But other than that, um, I think it's really the only downside I can say to here. If you're looking to use the showers, now each restroom in the loops only has one shower there's one shower one toilet one urinal i didn't check out the woman's room but i'm pretty sure it's probably about the same way all in all good experience been fairly peaceful quiet it's, it's very pretty if you're into hiking this is definitely a place to be there are so many trails for you to come out and enjoy um, i didn't video it i didn't have a camera but um where the lake is a certain time of year to have like little paddle boats that you can rent i think some canoes over there it's a small lake but you know you can paddle around there um, there's no swimming but you can rent the boats uh, yeah a pretty nice park like i said if you like hiking definitely a lot of hiking trails we enjoyed a couple that we walked immensely and it was very well marked uh pretty good trails all right, let's uh, let's go hit the road and put a ton of money and gas in this thing. Stop one, Montgomery, Alabama, at a Panera Bread, my wife's favorite place to eat. The kitchen sink cookie. Oh my god, this is delicious. The other one, near one. Go ahead and get one. They're heavy. Delicious. But uh. I forgot to mention something about the campground. They actually have cabins. Some of them are legit, like uh, log cabins built in the 1930s. They do have air conditioning. I think the wife said, what well, she remembered looking online, they were like 110 a night. Which might sound a little bit pricey, but um, you're getting a whole building to yourself. And they all have a nice, or pretty much all of them have some kind of view of the uh, lake there so 
might want to look into that. Even if you don't have, uh, you don't want to sleep in a tent and you don't have an RV, you can always rent a cabin. And that's not, that's true for like a lot of state parks. <coughs> Even some federal, but a lot of state parks actually have cabins you can rent. I rented one on Lake Gunnersville here in Alabama once, and that was absolutely beautiful. Right on the water, had a huge deck. So you're getting like 10 times the space of what you would in a hotel room. And you get the whole thing to yourself. And, you know, if you have a dog or something like that you want to bring with you, they're usually welcome in the cabins as well. So just a little uh, food for thought. All right. We're going to get on the road. Uh, somewhere on the other side of Montgomery, I found gas for 309. So we're going to fuel up there. Well, we made it home. We spent about $160 on fuel. We left out of here on three quarters of a tank. We stopped before we got into Georgia. Tanked up, that was a hundred bucks. And then we filled up south of Montgomery, or I guess west of Montgomery. That was $60. And we came back home on about a quarter tank what we left with. So, let's go Brandon. So, yeah, being the last camping trip, it's time to go ahead. We're going to do a little bit more than what we normally do. Normally just kind of take out a few odds and ends, but basically clothing and stuff and the food and that. But because it's winter time, it's going to get cold. Like I have this bin of extra batteries that we're going to take out. The Anything that runs on batteries, like the sleep number remote, I'm going to take in the house. Usually I leave the remote for the door. In here, I'm gonna be putting that away as well. There's no need to keep you know, anything batteries that don't really do good in cold. I learned that from last year. Uh, had quite a few batteries go bad sitting out in the cold. So, oh yeah, even this. Yeah, well, I'll leave that in here for now. But my, yeah, my, my tire pressure monitoring system. That thing's solar. And it recharges, it's got batteries in it, so we'll be taking that thing out as well. And I'll be, the, I'm going to drain the hot water heater, give it a flush, put it away with no water in it. So, yeah. Uh, damn, the gas is expensive. I hope that changes, because, man, it makes going camping in this thing very expensive. But, uh, maybe you guys, I'm not sure how many people watched the video, but I upgraded this refrigerator from one that ran on propane to one that's 12 volt. You use the compressor like your home fridge, but this runs on 12 volt and I have the solar and all that in here. And with the solar that I have running this thing the whole way home, about five hours, uh, I still came home and I had 100% battery because the sun was shining on the vehicle and it, it only draws like five amps of power. So with all the lithium I got in the solar, Definitely a lot better than driving around with a propane flame going to try to keep your food cold. And this thing's worked phenomenal. So, while well, I was on the topic of batteries, now we got the uh, shop vac out. I'm gonna vacuum this thing, clean it up, put her away for the season. Sucks, but is what it is. All right, so hear me out, man. I have a crazy idea. The wife's not that happy about it at all, but I really would love to have one monumental thing in my life. I mean, yeah, I, you know, joining the Army, becoming a warrant officer, flight school and stuff, uh, all major. I mean, finishing basic training, becoming military police. But something even more epic that push your mind and body. Um... So, like, you know, we just got back from Idaho, and we did some trail walking, a little bit of hiking, and then on this last tr camping trip, on this camping trip, we did some hiking. I really enjoy it. I really enjoy nature. I kind of like being out there. And I've been thinking about, I found out you can walk the entirety of the Appalachian Trail. You start in Georgia and walk all the way to Maine, or if you want to, you can go Maine to Georgia. Either way, it doesn't matter. 2200 miles so like 2190 miles some people take six months seven eight months some people do as little as four i'm thinking about it i think it would be an epic adventure 
push myself and I have a good cause I don't want to do it for but I'm not going to get into too many details here because I don't want to commit to anything before I know if I'm ready see this camping trip we hiked three days in a row uh, little four mile hikes day one felt okay came back you know a little sore in the legs nothing no big deal day two by the time I got back my calves were like really strained they were like tight and kind of hurting uh, day three when we were walking my shins really started to light up um, I have an old fracture in my left leg that kind of is what got me out of the army um, that in my back but uh whew, my shins were hurting so I don't know I know they say it takes you a few weeks to get your trail legs I should practice so maybe I'll do a little more hiking but I'm kind of interested in doing this I don't have any gear or equipment whatsoever except for a uh, portable coffee maker I wouldn't take the, <laughs> the 110 volt kettle the portable kettle but I have the little coffee maker and a grinder <laughs> but uh yeah I don't I don't have a backpack I don't have a tent or a sleeping bag or actually I I had the tent that I borrowed from my dad. The thing's like 50 pounds. I have a Marlboro backpack. The thing's kind of heavy. and Yeah, yeah, I just have to invest money into it. But I, want, I need to make sure I can hike. It's an idea, man. Let me know what you think. This would be months. I mean, th that's going to be probably the worst thing for me is being away from the wife for months. Probably realistically five, six months if I do it. But I just don't... I don't know if my body's up to it, but that's kind of one of the things that I want to, like, m maybe help motivate other people that have, like, back injuries and pain and that and be like, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. So we'll try to suffer through it. But it's an idea. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the video here. I'm not even sure what all I have. It's just some, I wasn't even going to videotape this. I've just been kind of down. Uh, haven't been that enthused uh, one none of the videos really from Idaho did that great I haven't I actually went a couple of weeks didn't gain a subscriber didn't lose a subscriber just it sat there like it was deleted again here in the past couple of days you know the past two three days I've gained 10 so I'm grateful for that but I don't know what's going on the views everything just like fell off the face of the earth there for a couple of weeks and I put a lot of work in those Idaho videos and when they get 40 views, that's not something that channel that's got 8,000 subscribers should be seeing. You know, before the channel got deleted, I was at like 150 to 200 views per video, and I was gaining a minimum of 10 a day. So, but what's really got me down on top of that is one of the cars is hurt. It's hurt bad. Uh, it's not an accident, but we have a major mechanical malfunction uh, that I'm working on I have to sort out a few more details I want before I put out that video so Smarty Nation you said you wanted more car stuff we're gonna have it unfortunately I mean I love doing the car stuff but not this I don't like a car being hurt this is gonna be expensive that's all I can say I think you guys are gonna be surprised probably all right, everyone, hope you enjoyed the camping thing. Try to make it as fun as possible and enjoyable. Let me know about the Appalachian Trail, and I got a car. I got to figure out something. So, till then, stay safe. Thank you very much for the support, and hopefully, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. What's with the camera? Damn. What are you videotaping me for? I said don't videotape me.